It's 94.3 WYBC. I'm Daryl Huckabee. And you know we're about the community 24-7, 365. We like to be involved in community events, but we also like to recognize people in the community that are doing big things. And we have a campaign going on right now with Canna Health and American Soul Kitchen and Bar for a local hero of the month. And I am excited to have the local hero of the month for the month of September on the line, Mr. Seth Poole. Seth, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Brother Dow. How are you? I'm, I'm fantastic, man. And uh, first of all, congratulations on being recognized. And looking at your bio, man, you, you have a long list of accomplishments and organizations that you've been involved with. Look, I love New Haven and, uh, you know, given to New Haven is, is a part of our family legacy. Uh, my grandmother taught New Haven for 35 years. The other one was a librarian for over three decades. My grandfathers were entrepreneurs, you know, Howard Market on Howard Avenue and uh, the other one owned a bunch of houses. So, you know, my family, you know, what, me and my me and my brother were the first two full generation born in New Haven because my family got here in the fifties and sixties. So it's like, you know, service has been, you know, weaved into our DNA. It's what we do. All right. So early on, you're a product of uh cross, uh, Wilbur cross, yeah, you, you yeah, had Wilbur some... cross the governors, them, them dogs over there, them, them <laughs> big dogs over there. And you did some big things in terms of athletics while you were there. Talk about that real briefly. Yeah. yeah I, I was, uh, I was, a uh, you know, Four sport athlete, um, indoor track, outdoor track football. You know, three three sport athlete. It all feels like four. Um, but um, all American shot putter. You know, I came in eleventh in the country as a senior, and uh, you know, we won basically everything in track and field uh, football. We had a successful, you know, uh, had a successful campaign. Uh, didn't win anything big, but. Uh, uh, I was, um, you know, I did get my name into into the uh, the walls of Canton uh, okay. over in the Hall of Fame as a scholar athlete with the uh, National Football Foundation. So that was like the crowning moment uh, on top of, you know, beating Hill House and winning MVP. That was, you know, I, that was definitely the first goal I had set for myself as a human being. So, uh, you know, I okay. that up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then you went to college in the state at Trinity and and yep. you uh, ended up graduating and staying in the state. Well, actually, you you mm -hmm. talk about when you almost moved or you moved briefly yeah. and then came right back. So I was a international studies Asian major. So I focused on Chinese language and history mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, learned a little bit of Mandarin and wanted to follow up on that and chase that as a uh, as a career. Um, you know, just as a kid, I loved GI Joes and sneakers and all the rest of this stuff. And all, and when I flipped it upside down, it all said made in China on it. I figured, how can I eliminate the middleman and actually be or become the middleman who makes the money so that, you know, things that, you know, I loved as a child could be supplied for people like in communities like mine. Um, but I, you know, did my research, found out the Chinese consulate was in the World Trade Center. Um, applied, you know, applied for jobs and was moving in that direction, lived in Jersey City for a minute. I mean, well, actually it was packed up to move on September 10th and uh, didn't get to go until they opened up the GW, but I went down there. I was there for about three months, couldn't find anything in the area except for cleanup and ground zero. So I turned around, came home and, uh, you know, picked up where I left off and service to the community. Yeah, and that was September 10th, the day before 9-11 back in 2001. So 2001, yeah. Yeah. So, so I've basically been, been back here since uh, I think it was uh, November, December 2001. And uh, by the time the springtime came around, I was doing after school programming over in the hill. So let's talk about the youth development uh, activities that you've been involved in. You have a long mm -hmm. list. So let me. Let me uh, read some of these things. You've been involved in LEAP in the past, the Dixwell Community House, New Haven Public Schools, Achievement First, Boys and Girls Club of New Haven. You're currently the youth director or youth development specialist and educator with Planned Parenthood. Oh, uh, actually, I, left, I actually left there in April. Now I'm with Clifford Beers. Uh, oh, okay. The director of System of Care, you know, building a, a system to assist and help in the health outcomes of New Haven's young people, zero to 21 and pregnant individuals on Chip and Husky. So that's what I'm currently doing. So obviously you have a passion in working with the youth. Yeah. I mean, 
I just always saw the the gaps in my own learning growing up and wish there was somebody to help and assist me or guide me, mentor me through these things. So, you know, as I guess Mahatma Gandhi said, like be the change you wish to see in the world. Uh, I've kind of taken that fairly literally um, mm-hmm. spoken to kids in or young people in, uh, you know, candidly about college, you know, every, you know, the college and what I was told about it was frankly a bunch of lies, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, oh, go to school, you'll be successful. No, go to school, you'll be in debt. And, you know, managing debt is what adulthood is about. And if we don't talk to our kids honestly about that, when they're 18, we tell them they're adults, that's a lie. We, t- <laughs> we tell them so many lies. Right. And, but it's like, we have to get to the point where we're telling them the truth and being, you know, transparent about how difficult it is to be an adult. And uh, I don't feel like that's a class that's being taught. I mean, it, there was a class once upon a time in school called social development when I was in school, which gave us a lot of these answers because we had uh, Mr. Romeo over at Wilbercross and he was, you know, one of those transparent teachers, one of those people who said, you know, bring me whatever it is you're dealing with and we'll process through it. But, you know, those teachers and, and educators are few, few and far between. And, uh, right. You know, so it was like I took it upon myself to fill that that after school gap for the most part and, you know, provide that level of education for our young people. Awesome. So we're talking to Seth Poole. He is our September local hero of the month. And in addition to the youth, you've been involved in uh, New Haven community activities. Um, Mm -hmm. You served four years as Ward 24 Democratic Committee Mm -hmm. co-chair or delegate to the state of Connecticut Democratic Convention. Uh, you mm-hmm. were also a nominee or a candidate for mayor last year as well. So, yeah, um, you're, you're yeah. civic minded to say the least. Yeah, there's there's just so much, you know. And it's, uh, I grew up during the era where children to be were to be seen but not heard, and uh, you know the mantra in our households is what, is what happens in this house stays in this house. And I watched all of this trauma and experienced all this trauma compile on top of itself, generation after generation, because people don't necessarily have an outlet to deal with their issues. And, you know, it was like, when I started to look at New Haven as a as a baseline, you know, it was mm-hmm. like, I had a, a shocking experience in college. First couple of weeks I was at Trinity, uh, we were all standing outside, there were a few hundred people outside and a truck rolled by and it backfired. And the South End of, Fi- South End of uh, Hartford is, you know, notoriously known for uh, gang activity. Right. Um, and everybody hit the ground except for me. And I laughed and said to them, like, why don't you know the difference between gunfire and a truck back? Right. But it took me years to realize that I was the one who was who was the most traumatized. You know, it's mm-hmm. like you're supposed to hear loud sounds and think danger, not be able to different differentiate between uh, what the caliber of the firearm was. Right. And, and I realized I knew that because there was an active firing range in back of my grandmother's house. Mm-hmm operating on Sherman Parkway for my entire life. And so it's I all about what you're you're exposed oh, to. In, oh, when in I your, came home, I was yeah. living with my mother and my sister who also lived like right across the street from uh Walter Pop Smith. Yep. And it was 10 o'clock in the morning and I heard three shot fired, you know, combat training. And I was like, I walked up the block and was like, what is going on here? And as soon as I found out about neighborhood management teams and things of that nature, I just couldn't stop because yeah. you know, it's like how do you see something going wrong you when you see something you got to say something if you don't Absolutely. say something you're part of the problem mm-hmm. well that's a great place to uh kind of wrap up i know you have a list of things and we could talk at least an hour about mm-hmm. you know everything that you've done and uh will continue to do but uh i i just want to congratulate you on behalf of the wybc family canna health and american uh soul kitchen and bar yeah. for your uh engagement in the community especially the youth and um uh, what you have planned for the future. So Seth, thank you so much for uh, being with us today. Thank you so much for the honor. And I'm um, looking forward to, look forward to finding out where this American kitchen sold and bar is. But what's that? What's going on? Oh y'all yeah. Got, y'all got oh. secrets going on in New Haven. You know, so you, you got new food and you're not sharing it with the bro. <laughs> we, we'll, we'll connect you with that for sure. For That's sure. Right. No, All right. That job. Thanks so much. Thank you. It's 94.3 WYBC. Daryl Huckabee in your community 24 7, 365.